This is the ZL1. It's been almost completely re-engineered from the base Camaro to be sharper and more completely track focused. So when we first got behind the wheel in a track out in Arizona, we came away highly impressed. The car is super responsive, the handling is neutral, you can turn in at will, there's a ton of front end grip, the power is always there to balance out the back end. The big question is, how much is all of that feel and all of that setup going to make up for the horsepower deficit? This is the Shelby GT500. 662 horsepower, that's the bomb that Ford dropped on Chevy. SVT has gone through this thing to make it a legitimate track car. You know, the first couple of iterations of GT500 were push pigs, so they weren't, uh, they weren't particularly good handling uh, vehicles. This promises to be something quite different. Uh, they've gone through the aerodynamics, uh, the suspension, everything is upgraded to handle that kind of horsepower. So let's see what Mike can do with it on the track. The Shelby GT500 as you'd expect, has just overwhelming power. Every time you hit the gas, it's just like almost punching you in the face. As a result, it's a little trickier to manage the throttle. You don't expect a car with this much low end torque and this much power to keep having so many reps. And the gearing is so tall, you actually take a lot of corners in second gear that you take in third in the Camaro. The Shelby doesn't have the trick performance traction management that the Camaro does, but you can uh, hit the stability control button. That turns traction control off and also loosens up the stability control settings to the point where it just keeps everything a little bit more tidy, which is nice in a car like this because basically the only two things it's doing is oversteer or understeer. Also, the steering isn't quite as good. It doesn't have the feedback in the feel, but this car is definitely capable. On the skid pad, just in a steady state condition, it pulls 1G. On the track though, it does have a couple problems putting the power down, like any time there's any undulations in it. It has a little bit of trouble adapting to that. Compared to the SS, the Z01 is a totally different car. It starts with the steering, which has this really good weight. You go through a corner, it weights up nicely. But everything about the car is stable, really communicative with the driver. This little chicane before the straightaway, every time you go through it, it just takes a set and it's stable. It makes it really easy to get back on the power and you get as much speed as you can through the straightaway. Then when you get to the end of the straightaway, you just haul on the brakes, and you've got all this front end grip. It makes it really easy to feel your way through the corner. Right there, that was the PTM kicking in. It's a really great system because if you're going just a little too fast or if you hit the gas a little too hard, it just barely tucks everything in. It does things that you wouldn't be able to do if you had the stability control all the way off because you can't make little adjustments to each wheel. The rear end is really planted too. It helps put the power down more effectively so you don't have to worry about, you know, am I hitting the gas too hard? Is this going to make the back end step out and waste time on the track? Despite the ZL1's better track manners, our best lap in it was identical to the time we set in the GT500. So we pulled over to discuss the finer points of these two super ponies. I tell you, if I owned either of these, I'd just do monster burnouts in front of Dairy Queen <laughs> all day. All right, day. well, and that's the thing with, I mean, the two different characters of the car. Ford is saying, look, not everybody's gonna go to the track. You know, you can pick and choose. You have the base car, and then you can upgrade to one that has an upgraded torsion differential, and then you can get all of the track accessories like a diff cooler and an oil cooler, all the stuff you need to do repeated lapping. The ZL1 comes with everything out of the box. It has all the coolers. GM and Chevy are saying, you know, hey, this car is track ready to go. So what do you think the high points of the Mustang are? Um, power. Right. Power. Yeah. Um, it's got that beautiful cue ball shifter. Yeah, I like it actually, and I like the shift action. I thought it was really stiff to begin with, but I grew to really like it. <laughs> it's really hard to ignore the 80 horsepower difference, and the Camaro is about 250 pounds heavier. Let's face it, they're both enormously powerful. Yeah. On the other hand, if you look at it like your breadth of talents of this car, you've got track prowess and road driving ease in the ZL1. Should you run into a Shelby on the street, every ZL1 owner is just going to have to just kind of hang their head there while the you know Mustang people laugh at them and then they go, well, it's really easy to drive on the track. How much quicker was the GT500 though? Well, the lap times actually turned out exactly the same. Although the Shelby did uh, 
warm its fluids pretty quickly, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, they both, both of them put a lot of emphasis on cooling and the water temperature stays pretty steady on both of them. It doesn't go up. But if you look at oil temperature, they both get really hot. And especially the Shelby, after like two laps, it's into the yellow. And after three, it's just on the border of the red for the engine oil temperature. It doesn't throw off any warning lights, but you look at it and you gotta go, maybe this should be a little lower. Yeah, if it's my money, I'm, I'm <laughs> gonna be slowing down pretty quickly, so. Well, the ZL1 is a lot easier to drive on, of course. It's way more user-friendly. You're getting more feedback from the steering wheel, uh, the brakes. And well, it's just not as hairy overall. I mean, yeah. you know, the power comes on smoother, the throttle input is, is smoother. It's easier yeah. to drive. I mean, at this point, we really don't know which one's the winner, and that in itself is really pretty amazing. Yeah, I've actually flip-flopped back and forth. You know, one drive, I'd go out and I'd really love the ZL1, and i think, oh, it's sophisticated, it's nice, I could live with this thing, it's still fast. And then I'd go out with the Shelby and go, oh, that's a kick in the pants. It's really fun. So I've gone back and forth. Do you want the brisket or the pulled pork? Right. When it comes down to picking a winner, we have to go with the ZL1. In contrast to the Shelby, the Camaro does almost everything with more refinement and with more empathy for its driver. One's a gorilla, the other's a racehorse. Which one would you rather ride?